it's truly an amazing time to be involved in healthcare technology. Over the last decade, we have witnessed significant changes in medicine, and perhaps most relevant to this audience is the digitization of health data. And yet today, we stand at a significant juncture. We have created and will increasingly create vast amounts of digital health data, yet much of that data remains underutilized and siloed in the organizations that hold it. Challenges of interoperability, limited access to computing resources at scale, and the critical need for security and privacy protections have often made it difficult for healthcare systems and life sciences companies to translate these rich data sets into meaningful improvements. Additionally, the creation and collection of this data has put significant strains on individuals within the healthcare system, including patients and their providers. Yet, I, despite these challenges, I see a bright future by granting providers and biomedical researchers access to better flow of data via cloud we're working to inspire new discoveries with AI and ML, which we expect will lead to insights to improve patient outcomes. I see a world where cloud and new AI-supported clinical insights and workflows will help providers spend more time engaging with their patients and less time facing computers. I see a world where cloud enables us to turn petabytes of healthcare, genomic, imaging, clinical, and claims data into breakthroughs and better care and streamlined operations. Unlocking the power of this health data is not easy and requires deep collaboration and partnership with each of our stakeholders, including patients, and requires careful data stewardship and protection of patient privacy. This journey holds great promise for positively transforming the way healthcare is delivered and enabling access for care, discovery, and insight. As we are successful, I believe these changes will lead to improved outcomes, increased patient and provider satisfaction, lower costs, accelerated biomedical research, discovery, and ultimately better health for everyone on the planet. Today, I'm fortunate to be joined by two luminaries in healthcare and biomedical research. Andrea Norris is NIH Chief Information Officer and director of the Center for Information Technology. As the NIH CIO, Ms. Norris oversees NIH's $1 billion IT portfolio, which supports scientific research and discovery. In addition, as director of NIH's Center for Information Technology, she manages a wide range of NIH-wide information and information technology services, including a state-of-the-art high-speed research network, the BioWolf High Performance Scientific Computing System, and cloud-based collaboration and tool platforms and tools, bioinformatics research programs, business solutions and applications, and not to forget the NIH data center and the 24 by 7 operations of its distributed computing environment. My second guest, Dr. Toby Cosgrove, is former CEO and president of Cleveland Clinic. He went to the University of Virginia School of Medicine and received a bronze star in the US Air Force in Vietnam. As a cardiac surgeon, he performed more than 22,000 operations and holds 30 patents for medical innovations. We are additionally excited uh, to announce today that Dr. Cosgrove is joining Google Cloud Healthcare team as an executive advisor. And now please join me, thank you, and please join me now in welcoming Andrea and Toby. Thanks so much for joining us uh, here today. Um, I'd like to ask you a few questions for the audience. Um, Andrea, first, what do you think are the largest drivers of change in healthcare and biomedical research today? So, Greg, as you know, the National Institutes of Health is the largest funder of biomedical research in the world. 80% of NIH funds, roughly $35 billion a year, support scientific research by 300,000 researchers all over the United States, and in some cases around the world. Today, we stand at a unique moment of opportunity for biomedical research. 
Now we're able to harness the power and rapid advances of uh, the technologies to accelerate discovery of new drugs, new therapeutic treatments, and cures in ways we just could not have imagined a short time ago. We're generating vast amounts of biomedical research data. It's doubling every seven to 10 months. Exponential growth in genomic sequencing data, huge volumes of high value data from electronic health records, mobile health technologies like personal EKGs, uh, diabetes treatment, and even my own Fitbit. Medical imaging data, even behavioral data data about the experiences that we have throughout our life based on where we were born, live, work, and play. This data deluge has led to many new big data research programs at NIH. Our Cancer Moonshot program is an ambitious effort to accelerate cancer, how we detect, how we treat, and how we cure hundreds of different types of cancers. Our Brain Initiative to revolutionize our understanding of the human brain and how it works, enabling us to make better diagnoses and to treat illnesses such as depression, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. And our new NIH Data Commons, which is a group of innovative projects testing new approaches, new tools, and methods for working with and sharing this big data in the cloud. We're experimenting with rich data sets across many different data domains and scientific data disciplines in ways we just could not do before. These are just three exciting programs we have underway where we're seeing tremendous opportunities for discovery. But there are challenges. Most of our research data is siloed in single computers or service servers, not integrated, not connected. We need to make research data more fair, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And most important, we need to make sure we are always protecting the privacy and security of an individual's health, information, or other sensitive data. We take that responsibility very seriously. We're also seeing some exciting opportunities in the areas of machine learning and artificial intelligence. In fact, yesterday, NIH just sponsored a very large workshop on these topics to see how we can use these capabilities to accelerate medical advances. How can we do a better job in recommending patient treatment options? And how can we do a better job in predicting the outcomes of those treatments? Today, it takes about a billion dollars in up to 10 years to get a successful new drug to use. How can we do that better, faster, safer, and cheaper? And how can we accelerate computer-aided diagnoses using MRI, other kinds of imaging data, or other diagnostic medical procedures? So we're at an exciting time, and we think we're just there's a lot more to come. We're just at the beginning. A truly an exciting time and an amazing amount of work um, going on at NIH. Um, thank, you, thank you for that summary. Toby, um, what do you think are the largest drivers of change in healthcare today? Well, Greg, we're seeing two really big things that are going on in healthcare right now. Healthcare is in the process of moving from art to science. And as you move, uh, make that move, you have to have data. And as you say, we've got a data deluge coming on now. The electronic medical record is present across the United States, really recording hundreds of millions of people's exams and physical findings. Then we've got digitization. Just take a mammogram, for example. There's as much information in one mammogram as there are in the entire New York uh, City phone book. Uh, huge amounts of data. Then genomics is another area with three billion base pairs in every human genome. Uh, then uh, we have also have a tremendous input of data from scholarly works. There are now 5,600 journals putting out over 800,000 articles a year. That's more than I can keep up with. <laughs> uh, and you stop and think about uh, this. Uh, the explosion of data can only be looked at in sort of retrospect. 100 years ago, the total amount of knowledge in healthcare doubled every 150 years. By 2020, the total amount of knowledge in healthcare will be doubling every 73 days. 
stunning. So we have to be able to uh, categorize that, and we have to be able to store it, we have to access it, and we have to interpret it. Big challenges going forward. The second thing that we really are dealing with is the explosion in cost in healthcare. Right now, as all of you know, the total uh, portion of the GDP is 18%. Um, and the concern is that it's going to go up and begin to limit the other things we can do, like education uh, across the country. And uh, what we are seeing is concerning the fact that we may be seeing more pressure on healthcare as we go forward. Two things the silver tsunami of people t uh, who are aging. Right now, there's 10,000 people a day who turn 65. Uh, and the life expectancy now is approaching 80 years of age. Uh, so a tremendous number of older people. The second thing that we have got to deal with is we can do more and more for people as we go forward. Just think about 20 years ago, we didn't have great joint replacements. We didn't have nearly the cardiac surgery we have now. We didn't have transplantations anywhere near what we're seeing. Uh, and uh, similarly, cancer care was not curing as many people as it does now. So we have got two things going on. One, an explosion of data we've got to learn how to deal with, which can also help us. And secondly, uh, we've got the cost, and we re we're going to require both technology and the ability to manage that data to, for us to get better care and control the cost. Yes, cer certainly uh, there's many challenges, but opportunities ahead, as you put it as you pointed out, with this explosion of data and explosion of knowledge. I think it's our responsibility to figure out how to use all of that for, to better patient outcomes. Uh, Andrea, what do you think these changes mean for the individual citizen? So at NIH, we're working to better understand disease and match the best care for you based on your unique health identity, your health characteristics, your life experiences, your genetic profile. Our All of Us program, recently launched in May, is among the most ambitious research effort that our nation has ever undertaken. We aim to collect a massive amount of individual health data from a million participants across the United States. It remains the hope for all of us to come together to help change the future of healthcare. Our goal is to uncover paths towards delivering precision medicine, individualized prevention, treatment, and care for all of us. Participation is open to everyone. We want to reflect the rich diversity of our country. Participants will be partners who are willing to share your biology, lifestyle, and environmental data to help research. You'll be a true partner with ongoing opportunities to help shape the program with your input. You'll have access to study information and data about yourself with choices about how much or how little information you want to receive. And rest assured, all of us is employing state-of-the-art security technologies and following strict security protocols and processes to protect your data and assure it is used ethically. The All of Us Data and Research Center is powered by Google Cloud and is supported by Verily Life Sciences together with Vanderbilt University and the Broad Institute to allow anywhere, everywhere researcher access, including citizen scientists. Key questions we hope to help answer. How can we prevent the chronic pain that affect, affects more than a million people across the United States each year, or develop better pain medicines that are not addictive? How can we slow down or stop different kinds of dementia? Did you know that every 66 seconds, someone in the United States is diagnosed with Alzheimer's? More than five million individuals live with Alzheimer's. My mother was one of those uh, as well. Develop treatments for diabetes, which affects almost 10% of all Americans, or again, better yet, prevent it altogether. And develop more cancer cures that will work the first time so we can skip painful trial and error chemotherapy. I encourage everyone to sign up at allofus.nih.gov. 
learn about your own health, including personalized risk factors, and studies that lead to new understanding and treatments. Help fight disease and improve the health for you, your family, and friends, and future generations. It will take all of us to be successful at this. Yeah, truly important work. Thank you, Andrea. And I'll put a plug in for that. Uh, all of us.nih.gov, we're delighted to host that on Google Cloud together with Verily and our partners at Broad as well. Um, Toby, um, same question for you. What do these changes mean for the individual patient? Well, it's great. A great question, and it's really exciting. Everything is going to change. You know, who we're, uh, what we're, diseases we're uh, treating is going to change. Uh, we're now seeing more chronic disease. Um, the acute disease is going away, and 85% of our costs in healthcare are now for chronic disease. So it's going to be a big push on keeping people well. The second thing is going to change is how we treat them, and it's going to be much more personalized medicine as the human genome becomes a regular part of our therapy for patients. Where are we going to treat them uh, is going to be different. You're not going to treat chronic diseases in the hospital anymore. You're going to treat them at home. Uh, you're going to treat them in outpatients. And a lot of it is going to be done uh, by virtual visits. In fact, some hospitals now systems are beginning to see only half of their doctor visits are being done in person. Big change there. Then you have to say, who's going to treat them? Well, we've got about 100,000 doctor shortage across the United States, so you're going to see more and more nurses and physicians assistants stepping in uh, to be able to, to help, and that's one of the ways that technology can really support them. Uh, and the other question is, who's going to pay for it? We now see that high deductibles are part of what's going on, um, and co-pays, and so people are now interested in how much things cost and what the results are going to be. So they're pushing more and more towards value for healthcare. And that is where it's going to, the information is going to be ubiquitous. People are going to uh, deal with it everywhere. They're going to use it as they want to use it. They're going to measure the value. Uh, and I think that this is a tremendous change for healthcare providers and for the entire healthcare system in the United States, in fact, really around the world. Yeah, certainly data is going to be key importance to uh, businesses, for healthcare systems to really survive in the age of value-based care and, and knowing that data and action in it. You're, you're absolutely right. And this is the key to driving quality and taking costs out. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So, so Toby, just thinking about your four decades of experience at the Cleveland Clinic, how can you give us, how has technology impacted uh, the practice of medicine in your experience and, and what you've seen at Cleveland? Oh my gosh, it's affected almost everything. I must remember back when I did my first paper, what we did is we had spreadsheets of big yellow pieces of paper and we used to go in on Sunday afternoon and make telephone calls <laughs> to find out how people were going. Things have changed just a little bit over that period of time. Um, but let's take heart surgery, for example. Heart surgery, everybody has taught, heard the expression, the cracking in the chest. Well, that was an incision that was about this long. Uh, then it went to minimally invasive, which was about a two and a half inch incision. Then it went to robotics, which was three little one centimeter incision. And now heart valves are being delivered with a catheter with no incisions uh, whatsoever. Very exciting change there. Then let's take stroke. People used to have a stroke and there was nothing you could do for them. You would count on rehabilitation. Now we have got uh, clot-busting drugs, uh, and also we have mobile stroke units. So we're beginning to take the care to the patient. And when somebody has a symptom that sounds like a stroke, you, dis you dispatch an ambulance. It can go and do the CAT scan in the driveway. And then through telemedicine, they can read it. Um, and start the drugs right there, saving millions of brain cells uh, for patients. And now what's really exciting and is on the verge of uh, actual, actually treating patients and multiple patients, and we're starting to put pacemakers in people's brains in the area of infarction and seeing much more rapid rehabilitation and gaining uh, their uh, activities back closer to normal. Finally, let's look at cancer. Cancer used to be a, a something that you treated and you gave the chemotherapeutic agents and you saw if they work and if they didn't work, you try something else. It's really a trial and error. Now what we're doing is we're sequencing 
uh, the patient, we're sequencing the tumor, and we're directing the chemotherapeutic agent to the particular geno, uh, genotype of the cancer and then repeatedly doing it over treatment period. That does a number of things. It decreases the morbidity uh, of it, it improves uh, the treatment, it improves the mortality rates, uh, and clearly it's much more efficient. So the changes that have gone on have been built around new technology and new knowledge. And I am so excited about what we're seeing going forward because now we have the opportunity to understand all the things that go on across the body in much more detail and treat them much more efficiently and much less invasively. It's a great time for medicine. As I said, truly an exciting time to be involved in healthcare technology. And terrific. Really, really appreciate you plugging in, um, help guide us here at Google Cloud. Uh, Last question for Andrea. Um, partnerships will continue to be key for transformation in, in healthcare and biomedical research. Can you share your thoughts on how NIH is approaching transformation and partnerships? So at NIH, we can only achieve the kind of advances we need through partnerships with academia, other research institutions, the public, and industry. We cannot do this alone. And I'd like to acknowledge the important support that Google has provided to NIH over the last several years in some of the key program areas we've talked about today. Greg, it was just a few short months ago when we met to talk about the opportunity to join forces and modernize our research data ecosystem through the use of state-of-the-art cloud platforms, software, and tools. We talked about how important it is to stay focused on our missions. And we acknowledge that NIH's mission to pursue and apply fundamental knowledge about living systems to extend healthy life and reduce disease, and Google's mission to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful are clearly synergistic. And we've learned that cloud computing can overcome many of the data challenges we face. Scalable storage, elastic computing, and all the rich tools for data preparation and analysis. In line with NIH's first ever strategic plan for data science, today NIH launched a new initiative to harness the power of commercial cloud computing and provide NIH researchers access to the most advanced computational infrastructure tools and services. We're calling it the STRIDES Initiative. It stands for Science and Technology Research Infrastructure for Discovery, Experimentation, and Sustainability. It's a mouthful. And as Diane Green just announced this morning, we're delighted that Google Cloud is our first industry partner. This innovative partnership will allow hundreds of thousands of researchers, those working at both the NIH and at the more than 2,500 academic institutions, to make use of Google Cloud's technologies and services to advance health and reduce the burden of disease in a more cost-effective and equally important, a more sustainable framework. Our initial efforts are going to focus on making NIH-funded, high-value biomedical data sets accessible through commercial cloud platforms. This data will be incorporate standards that are endorsed by the medical research community and enable individuals with all levels of expertise to find, access, reuse, and share this high-value research data. And we'll do all of this while ensuring the safeguards that are needed to secure and protect the privacy of your personal health information or other sensitive data. We're also partnering with Google Cloud to take advantage of some of the amazing innovations we've heard about already today, machine learning, artificial intelligence, experimenting with new ways to optimize technology-intensive research hoping to capitalize on some of the opportunities we've been discussing. In addition, we plan to establish training programs for researchers on how to use the Google Cloud Platform for health research. 
So why are we excited about this? Put simply, our partners like Google Cloud will provide the state-of-the-art platforms and tools we need to support our new computationally intensive, data-rich biomedical research programs. That means our incredibly talented researchers can focus their efforts on what they do best, applying the best scientific expertise, methods, and tools to make new, critically needed discoveries and breakthroughs in health. We hope our STRIDES initiative will begin to shift today's research paradigm to a richer and more collaborative model. Greg, together we can take advantage of this great opportunity to implement an open, interconnected, and sustainable ecosystem for collaboration and discovery, where we can bring the best scientific and technical insight into some of our most challenging health problems. And in this way, with help from Google Cloud, we believe we can begin making great strides to accelerate discovery and improve your lives, the lives of your family and friends right now and for future generations to come. Thank you, Andrea. We couldn't be more excited at Google Cloud to partner with NIH in this truly important work. Thank you. Um, with that, I'm gonna thank my guests and uh, we have another fantastic panel to follow. <laughs>